Hi, welcome to Wrestling in Mom's Basement. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This guy to my right is the Burt to my Ernie, the Nick to my Matt Jackson. Joe Benito. Thank you. I prefer the first one. Ah, uh, this is episode five, I believe, of uh, the podcast. All right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ah, uh, things things were a little delayed this week with House of Hardcore on the fuck. Yeah. The weekend. Ah. Uh, we couldn't actually end up shooting on Saturday, so... Yeah. We're bringing it to you now right before uh, Raw this week, right. which is actually probably late, so... Right, uh... But anyway, please enjoy. Part one's going to be the review. In this week's review, so some part ones will be reviews, and this will be uploaded during Raw at some point, depending on how long it takes. It's probably going to be a shorter than usual version of yeah. the video. Then, part two will probably be uploaded sometime later this week, but I'll be recording after Raw tonight. Uh... First roll last week, uh, the last year I the match, thought was the best match of the week, probably off the top of my head right now. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I mean, uh, that is definitely the only match of the week for last week. Uh, also matched uh, uh, the best Braun using the Ulfus Shear, Roman, uh, on Roman, and then the end with Joe going to Roman. I'm not sure that's going to play into something tonight or, but. It did build it built all three up legit for Brock's title on Sunday. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really hope I can actually find the gif this week of Braun throwing that chair. Because you guys know I, I love using gifs in my tweets. Uh, but it, it is without a doubt a hilarious, hilarious thing to see. It was pro- it was definitely the funniest thing last week. And that includes Bash Fouls, which is also hilarious, so uh Mm-hmm. But yes, the that was my uh, top match of the week last week as well. Uh, not I don't think we're all enjoyed, uh, which I think, which is easily I think the best book storyline on the main rosters right now. Uh, Dean and Seth, Seth yeah, as the as the shield turns, I guess, <laughs> to play off of a step opera. Ah, uh, and so are the days of our lives. L- Lastly, was a little different. It was, it was the opposite of the week prior with. Dean doing, uh, Dean not helping Seth from be down from Star and Sheamus. Seth helping Dino, and then Dean finally being the one to stick to s- stick his fist out, but Seth didn't do it because of the way Dean's been acting like a jerk as a late. I'm not trusting him, which don't really blame him though either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> However, it was all, it was also very nice to see that WWE wasn't willing to just throw. throw it. Third on TV, like the fist bump. Dean finally gave in and started doing it and stuff. It's like, I don't I don't need this. And which draws that out a bit longer and just holding off to the perfect men when I'm guessing they they're gonna win the tag team titles. And then they and then they finally do the uh, fist bump. Yeah. I'm assuming they want to the roll tight until sometime between now and between Sunday and no mercy, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh and the other part I'm enjoying close those keep it the other part of Rollish that I enjoy because they still keep it subtle for the most part and not going over the top. We'll be uh, Finn and Brace feud continuing. Yeah. Uh, I had no idea what Brace says, and that's been the norm. But I won't take what he can still deliver a promo. Uh, and the mind game aspect, I'm glad I'm glad that they're, they're just keeping it with, like, I guess the magic axe disappearing and then floating to the backstage or whatever, or standing on turnbuckles. Because, uh... It's uh, better than what I thought was going to be one. I, the original idea for a few, when there was just a few earlier in the year, which was, I thought Bray would just be calling promos in like the fog, and Finn will be crawling around behind him, haunting him as the demon. The, the, they're definitely going about the better way here. Yeah, I'm really glad it's not something that's overbooked like uh, House of Horrors or what Bray and Randy actually became. Uh, it's, very, it's very understated. Uh, what I'm taking from it is mostly... Bray without saying the words demon or wanting or wanting to fight the demon or whatever, or drawing the creature out of Finn without saying any of those words that's pretty much what I'm taking it as that he won he sees that as a big beast in the corner that he wants to fight and prove that he's more dominant then but it and I'm guessing that is pretty much the gist of his promos uh, I'm just hoping that they keep it as solid as this on Sunday and they don't yes. go overboard. They don't go overboard like they're WrestleMania. 
Uh, anything else for him? Um, Rome was a good shutdown, so I just thought that really, like, a week yeah, later that really out. stood out. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, not, this, not no. really. Okay. Not that I can think of. Uh, SmackDown Live, for me, it wasn't the best part of the show, but it was still one of my favorite parts because I realized how much I haven't paid attention to it until this week. Uh, I do want to get her credit. I think, if I know where her character's going, is I do think Lana's character development, there's something there with the story. Yeah, that match was very, very entertaining. Yeah, uh... The, the, the idea that she... I mean, even, even if you take out the uh, wardrobe malfunction yes. going on in that match. Uh, the idea that the, the that she can't wrestle is, uh, I feel it's a horrible gimmick and nobody built her up as she was going to be a big star for SmackDown Live. Mm -hmm. uh, but now all the old girls manga her, including a face like Charlotte, who still don't feel like a full... Who feels like she could turn at any time to me, Charlotte? Because she's still acting like the queen. Uh, obviously, the Charlotte has everybody to mock Lana, where she's face her heel. Yes. And, and Rick to Paris to get the best. Versus, okay, she's not the worst. And if anybody's seen Dana play Tarzan on Monday night, Lana's definitely not the worst in the room. <laughs> uh, uh, but. <laughs> On SmackDown, Lon is the worst in the ring to, to power, I think, it's safe to say, on SmackDown. But I also see Lana trying to improve, and the whole story with Tamina might be the most interesting thing Tamina's ever done. Yeah. So, I'll give her credit for her character development, so I'm interested to see where that goes. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's that, it was actually a very entertaining, uh, moment, uh, in this, in the, sh well, altogether in the show. Uh, but Alana actually brought back the entertainment value probably the first time in actually a long, a long time. Mm -hmm. So, I, and well, I am willing to see where this goes, which is actually a big step from where it was. Uh, I'm working backwards there. And all parts had that delay like, stick on the topic of the woman. I wasn't as big as being bash like some people were, but uh, Carmella's development. We'll have Ellsworth back. It's, mm -hmm. it's good for her. It feels like SmackDown is finally going back to what they were doing last year with their woman, Aiken the Drift. Like, everybody's getting some better character development here and there. So, Ellsworth being back does add a layer to Carmella's character, which, which she'll, she's been getting sustained heat, but it's more, more with him. It's just how she won the money in bank both times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Joe alluded to, I actually didn't mind the match. Uh, if I was just to rate the matches themselves, uh, I would actually probably put it around the same spot as Charlotte and Lana. Um, I would I would say Charlotte and Lana was was a lot more entertaining for what it was. But I but I felt it was but I felt uh, Naomi and Carmella was on the level and. Uh, Are we on another level. It's it's not on the Neville level. I'll, I'll I'll say that it's not on the Neville level. However, I thought it was in the same level as the other women's match that actually had the more entertaining story. So it was on a lot of level. Yes, and uh, I think at this point, Carmella really needs James Ellsworth. Yeah. I think he get I think he gets her that little personality that I, at least to play something, someone to play off of, and that little. Uh, it, it's it's very hard to describe. It's just that little something that I, that gives her a little bit more than she would have her, that she has had in the last couple of weeks. And uh, I think my own thing is with I don't I'm a little weary of two inconsistent women, few for the main title or few for the only title yeah. on the brand for the woman. Uh, that's why I kind of want Natalia win if you want them if they're going to be in a title contention. Uh that's. That's the only thing that's holding me back. Uh, my favorite part of SmackDown was probably Shane's Rules of Engagement. Yeah. With AJ Owens. Cause at, I agree. At first, I thought this was just going to be sub where the odds were stacked against Owens. Because him and Shane and being using the beef. But now they Owens turned the tables on AJ this week, brought their history. And then AJ laying out Shane accidentally with the Pele. But 
But he didn't really. He aimed for Owens, but it's not like Owens moved out of the way. Owens, AJ, or it's not like Owens pulled Shane out of the way. Yeah. AJ did hit Shane though. Uh, so that builds up that tension there. And ladies and Shane and AJ still aren't buddy buddy, you know, Shane took AJ's request and kept up with SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, it was probably the best segment of the week, I'll, I'll say that. Um, uh, meaning non match wise. Uh, I, I actually did like that they still, like, even though AJ turned baby phase, especially in the WWE recently. Where if one turns baby face with a baby face party figure, they're automatically friends even though they just stopped feuding for sure. some reason. Uh, that happens a lot. I mean, not even with party figures. It just happens a lot. Like two guys who feud. See that? Post yeah. Up. Then down the road, uh, the other guy turns face, and then next time they interact with each other or tag up or whatever, they're all buddy buddy and hugging. Um, I'm not, uh, it's, it is nice to see that uh, that at least two faces that don't really care for each other go forward. And it also, uh, the segment also accomplished the fact that there's a lot of tension between them. Uh, so much so that AJ, I don't believe, actually checked on Shane after he missed the hail. No. So, it's, it's pretty much that he didn't care that he hit Shane. Right. He was still wor more worried about Ellen. And he didn't really care that much about it. And as for it, it's not, it makes the match not as predictable as Sunday, so. Uh, I'll, I'll actually add one more positive to SmackDown. Um, the, Us the Usos the and, the, and, the, and the New Day. Uh, it's actually very nice to see that the New Day is, is a bit more angry and, want their, and more aggressive and are pissed off the Usos and wanted to attack them, besides just doing some sort of uh, thinly veiled penis joke or uh, or riding a bicycle with ice cream. It's actually nice to see the Usos actually be a little bit more realistic. The Usos, the New Day, be, be a bit more realistic, especially since the Usos are actually being quite aggressive towards them. It's it's just really nice and refreshing to see the New Day go that route. Uh, yeah, I do agree. I saw them in for a while now that do they need it since they turned face two years ago, so. Since they turned face again the second time two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I remember for one two years ago, uh, last year. Uh, so, last year during WrestleMania companies. Uh, so, it's, it's good to see that. Um, that, I do think that will be about it for SmackDown. Yeah. Real quick, going back to Owens, uh, not sure what I noticed. But they did change his gimmick today because his Titan yeah. is not the, his entrance. Yeah, it, it, the, it was back to the, the KO. The face of America was gone. Yeah, it's back to the KO. He didn't have KO. to walk around his face not to step on it. Yeah. He just went straight forward. It was just the KO barbed wire red stuff. Uh, that's not going to the biggest winner for best book or worst book from the show. Okay. I did two and two this week, too. Ah, I got uh, for me, the worst book on Raw, I, I don't have, no one, there's no one that's consistent. Uh, my number two worst book on Raw, because they're just not getting it, uh, Jason Jordan. Yeah. Uh, the Toronto one, Rene Goulet, Pierre, uh, Jean-Pierre Goulet. Name it, Jean-Pierre Lafayette and Rene Goulet. <laughs> to win. Uh, <laughs> and with the let's go jobber and they booed Jason. It's not, that they, it's not like they didn't care about Jason, they legit booed him. Yeah. Uh, now they may have dropped a few with the Miz too, which is probably for the best. At the same time, it really sucks that they're calling title. Like, they're a little more they planned to build back up this last year. Yeah. It's not going to be on SummerSlam. Uh, but as of right now, it's not going to be on uh, SummerSlam. Uh, Miz, is, Miz has done enough work this year <laughs> where he deserves a spot in SummerSlam. But. The, this view shouldn't be the one on SummerSlam, no. so... Uh, and I didn't really see them rushing another face to get Miz on the SummerSlam. With, a, with six days on, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Jordan will be my number two for Raw. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you. For sure. Yeah. Just because it's a separate storyline from what I'm thinking of. And I know from how you were talking that 
we we agree on what was the worst book this week for Raw. Uh, yeah, it's. I didn't think he was as bad as he was last week, uh, but he ended up talking more last week than he did this week, so that that's probably why. Um, he ended up suplexing the jobber a lot. I mean, even for like a jobber match where you're supposed to show off what your offense is, it really wasn't all that interesting to what I know Jason Jordan can do. So, yeah, I'm gonna ha- at this point I'm gonna have to put him out on the worst book. And not to go on top of it, but they just showed on TV for Raw that Brock Lesnar is on Raw tonight. Yeah. And all, I think from one look at all four guys are going to be at the same rate at the same time. Yeah. Uh, not to go on top of it, but since we're on top of Raw, and I guess we're going to do this one together. Our worst book, well, should be for different people. Uh, our worst book. Uh, big, uh, big, sh- big, sh- big, big show, show big, cast, big cast, and, and, and so. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep it simple. The sword I was in tra- was. Actually, when a better book things one roll, Leon to Great Bulls of Fires. Yeah. Since Great Bulls of Fire went the other way, and uh, Bishop deserves better than these two clowns. Uh, yeah, it, it probably should have stopped the Great Balls of Fire just between Enzo and Cass. It, it really should have. Uh, after Cass squashed Enzo, there was really nothing to add to the storyline. It's just Cass beating him up and getting out of the way. Or he could have beat him up on Monday Night Raw, and then Big Chip could have came in, and then Cass, I mean, then ends up just go somewhere. Uh, probably the Cruiserweight division, even though he's been saying he's 206 pounds. Uh, uh, but it's, I think the storyline's being held on wait for way too long. Finn's bigger than Enzo. Yes. Uh, 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 Cass lays out Big Chip two weeks now. Big Chip, make Cass is like a doofus. He's going to lay down two weeks. And it will also culminate in a shark age. Yeah, for some Which reason. Is the for gimmick, some the reason. The flavor gimmick of the month. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, I tweeted it's Vince's fetish, and I, I I can't disagree with what I said on Monday. No. It has to be Vince's fetish. Uh, because winners are all... They were the best booked on Raw. I'm going to say that, but I'm giving number one to somebody else. Because, you know, they lost world booked them well, I thought. But my number two best book, you know, technically number one best book, obviously, is Dean and Seth. Uh, overall, it, it, it is the best story I want to make around TV right now. Uh, I love the long term play, and they obviously feel like they, unlike most people, they uh, honestly feel like they have a direction they're leading to. There's an end goal with Dean and Seth, whether it's Dean turns or the shield reforms on all three down the line, there does feel like there's an end goal here. I'll like some sort of lines. Uh, I, I guess my second place. Best book would be uh, Cesaro and, and Sheamus. Um, I think they're acting like the perfect foils for Seth and Dean, uh, and is, are really being the uh, catalyst to what will eventually bring them together. So I, they're my second best book of all. They were my number two. La- they were my number one last week before, and they were technically my number two this week. I'm going to number one because even though they lost this person. I, I think it's someone more out by just because Roll booked them like they had a chance and I went to near falls. Even if she did tap out, <laughs> she killed the match though. Yeah. She shined in the five minute match that they had, I mean five minutes. Uh instead of Sasha shine Emma Emma was my best book for the week because Emma feels like she was put on Sasha's level. And even though she was the one tapping on Lucia for whatever reason, Emma for Sasha to finale to after she t- to attack. Like she was back yeah. to Sasha move move. Alicia wasn't really in collision. Though there was a point where Alicia almost forgot to kick out. Where Emma will have been in the normal contender match tonight, which I will also been fine with. Alicia I became a bigger fan of you, if you will bosh. Uh and by the way, if somebody could tell me the last time Alicia Fox wrestled, because I asked that last week, please let me know in the comments on Twitter. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I'll go with Emma for that reason. Technically, Emma's my number two though in reality, but. Uh, I'm going to give Emma an honorable mention. Just because of the fact that she was used. Uh, not even getting into the match, just, just the fact that they put her in a match. Right. Okay, so- I'm going to give her an honorable mention. Uh, but my number one book this week is obviously Seth and Dean. Uh, this this storyline's probably the most riveting and. Very, and very much the most interesting in WWE. It's perfect. It's the only one for yeah. the deal, except you like. It, it's, it's at the point where we're going to see what happens next. 
And then what, what, what's next to be them actually being two-thirds of the shield again, uh, with eventually the third being Roman. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're my favorite that, that's been booked on Raw this last week. And this, unlike most storylines, doesn't feel like it's being booked each week. Yeah. It feels like there's an end goal for change. Yes. Uh, and there's also a very nice drama to it. They're holding off on certain things. Yeah. Eh, it's things they know what the fans want, but they're holding off on it to, like, no, you're, we're going to wait to get that big pop. So. Uh, best book and worst book for SmackDown. Number one is easy, but I'll get to that in a minute. Number two, SmackDown is a little bit hard for me to find a worst book. Because last week I had Sammy and Rusev, and even they weren't terribly booked on those episodes. Uh, this week she wasn't terribly booked. I just thought by now, if she was going to shake up, she would be in a bigger role. Especially going to SummerSlam. Because now it definitely looks like she's going to be off the car altogether in Charlotte. Uh, there's no reason other than the fact she's on the SummerSlam card. I don't I have a reason why. Because she did nothing wrong. Even the book team did nothing wrong this week. It's just she's out on the car for SummerSlam. Uh, oh. And that's just nitpicking because I don't have a number two. My number one is clear as day. Or are we going to include uh, Flair in the news? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, now she definitely will be on SummerSlam, which I'm sure yeah. you heard by now. Even if she was scheduled, she's probably not going to be on SummerSlam. She yeah. Pro- she's probably not going to be on SummerSlam now, at least. Yeah, uh, um, that'll be covered in the roll. Yeah. Um, probably my, probably my uh, second worst book is probably uh, Sammy and uh, Ty. Um, they're, I know they're not really doing anything, but I'm not sure if Sammy should be on the losing side more right now. Um, I, don't, I don't think they should be necessarily taking those losses. I think you could probably get um, an enhancement talent or a uh, job or team or curtain jerkers, whatever you want to call them, uh, to do that for the Usos and have them be very dominant against them. Uh, I'm not sure if Sammy or Ty necessarily need to take that loss from the Usos. They were in Toronto. They that wanted the they wanted to cheap people to That explains uh, it. Uh number one worst book on SmackDown, gender. Absolutely. Main champion of the company loses clean next to RKO. They have Rusev there, he couldn't even interfere. Yeah. I personally I don't mind. Rusev literally kicked Orton after the match. Right. Uh personally I don't mind because I'm a micro fan of Orton and Gender. But uh He's going but, to SummerSlam. Yeah, he, he has the WWE mm-hmm. Championship. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Yeah, he, he needs to be booked stronger. It doesn't matter who holds the Universal title, the WWE Championship is still the main championship. Uh, the biggest spot of the week that uh, I want to just throw them together close for a real instance is actually smacked out for me. And that bull suit gender too, getting clean pinned. Uh, yeah, I think that... Maybe get pinned clean up. Yeah, that is definitely the biggest mistake of the week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a roll at iffy moments, that one was just too big to not get in front of. Yeah. And I don't really have to explain why people were thinking gender is a loser anyway. Yes. So, I got to, yeah. and so that didn't help. And then tomorrow night, it was announced earlier today, he straight said Josh Cena on SmackDown. I wonder how that ends. I bet you Cena wins and Corbin lays out Cena after <laughs> the match. <laughs> Which all sides are pointing to, he's getting treated like. However, watch if he's getting if it, they go that route. Ginger's keeping the belt in SummerSlam. If that if that happens, I'm calling it right now. I highly doubt that. He's uh, they they're, they're normally at least decent protecting their main chips in in non title matches on yeah. TV. So I'm still going to stick with Ginger's lose all the white. It, they lost faith because he didn't move numbers to in India. The most numbers his his ring has gotten was a one night appearance from Kabul. Yeah. Uh. Then, but then that's really all I got for the big spot. Uh, show of the week. They're, they're a bit a little more even skill this week for me. Last two weeks I've been smacked down one single handedly. Yeah. Uh, both did play right. But the ending of SmackDown. They leave a sour taste in my mouth for the fact that Jinder's the third champion. And and then Roll obviously didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth because that was the best player role. Roll on the on higher and roll and I'm not I can't think of Roll storytelling Dean and Seth and their failed four way match over the fact that Roll's bad book involves Jason Jordan, 
who's not going to own SummerSlam card, it looks like. And Big Show Cast and Enzo, which I don't really care about anyway. SmackDown's to make the third shape loose clean, and we're all there. Everything was at least decent to, to excellent with the two main storylines. So I'm giving, I'm giving it to roll this week because the end of SmackDown hurt it for me. Um, yeah, as much as, much as it's not interesting to agree with you, I, I actually do agree with you quite, quite a bit. Uh, like, like this time's no exception. Um, it's really, for shows, it's really what you see last that sticks with you. And what stuck with me on Raw was the awesome Last Man Standing match. On SmackDown, it was the WWE Champion taking a clean loss for no reason whatsoever. So, I'm going to give it to Raw this week. And since Raw's about to start, I'll do the NXT review real quick on the news video. On, in the next upload, this will be uploaded at some point. And see you for part two. Right, see you for part two later, guys.